A real crime. In a series of podcasts, I want you to travel down some lonely roads with me. These are the roads I traveled with families who never got to say goodbye to loved ones. These family members were fated to live the rest of their lives waiting and wondering. I wrote these stories when I worked as a reporter for the Charleston Gazette. Thanks for being with me today. I am still exploring this theory I have about how violence can ripple out into the universe with some devastating effects. Episode 11, Tony Dean Adkins. An alleged Satanist burned God's house. Years passed. The arsonist's housemates beat him to near death. Did the evil that the arsonist sparked into flames ripple back to him and bring on his own death. In 1990, members of the Oak Hill Methodist Church watched in horror and sadness as their beloved church was consumed by flames. For more than six decades before the fire, the pillared church had pride of place on Oak Hill's main street. From the church, a viewer can see south across to the lovely tree-lined ridges that give the town such a beautiful backdrop. When the church first opened its doors, the windows in the sanctuary were plain. About 20 years before the fire, members installed beautiful stained glass windows in rich colors of blues, reds, and purples. For six years before the fire, church members were busy making their house of worship even more beautiful. They installed a a state-of-the-art pipe organ built by the Shantz Company. The organ alone cost almost $200,000. In the pews, people could be aided in worship by the light through the windows and the sound of music soaring through all the pipes of the organ. While they watched a beautiful and spiritual place burned, members were saddened to think of their church home overtaken by flames. Each slate tile on the roof weighed nine and a half pounds, making the entire roof weigh 60 tons. As the fire spread, fighting the fire became dangerous too. After the fire, one fireman told me that some of the most intense praying ever done at Oak Hill Methodist Church came from the firemen on the roof. In a hearing, Tony Dean Adkins' brother would testify that Adkins set fire to the Oak Hill Methodist Church by igniting the blaze with his eyes. Adkins' then 17-year-old brother John told a magistrate that his brother told him, I burned the church. I told it to burn with my eyes. His brother added that Tony was across the street from the church smoking a fat joint. Did Satan give Adkins this ability to allow him to destroy God's house? I have my doubts. Another story circulated that Adkins believed the church to be the richest in town. Did he break in to steal valuables? Adkins was a professional bodybuilder and a seven-time winner of the Mr. Junior California Bodybuilding Association. After the fire, a state trooper testified that he found a basement door had been forced open, even though it was locked with a deadbolt. The door facing was splintered. The trooper believed that with all of his muscles, Adkins could have forced the door open. The church suffered $2.5 million in damages. Police discovered the church was on fire at 2.43 a.m. June the 11th, 1990. In a hearing, though, a 13-year-old girl testified that she was talking with Adkins on the phone after midnight, June 11. She said Adkins told her he was trying to fix his Ozzy Osbourne tape while they talked. This was in the days before cell phones. She testified she'd called Adkins at his mother's house outside of Oak Hill on his mother's landline phone. In 1991, Adkins entered a no-contest plea to second-degree arson and breaking and entering. A no-contest plea means a defendant does not admit guilt but agrees to enter a plea. In law, the effects of a guilty plea and a no-contest plea are the same. The judge will sentence a defendant as though the person entered a guilty plea. One advantage for entering a no-contest plea 
a defendant cannot have that no contest plea held against him if there's a civil suit also filed. For the fire, Adkins was sentenced to two consecutive one to ten year prison terms. Was Adkins a Satanist, as some thought, or did he just enjoy adding this aura of evil to his bodybuilder's frame? Together, they could give off the message, don't mess with me. Did he flirt with Satanism, or was he a true believer? His family said no, but rumors swirled around him. One person claimed that if Adkins went to purchase gas, he insisted that the counter stop at $6.66. After serving time in prison for the church fire, Adkins moved into a house in Red Star, a former mining community not far from Oak Hill. A woman believed to be his girlfriend and two other men were also living in the house. In court hearings, living arrangements for the group were never explained. Another man with the last name Adkins was one of the housemates, but he was not related to Tony Adkins. On July the 31st, 1999, the three men had been drinking and fighting off and on all day. At some point, Adkins walked into his girlfriend's bedroom and shut the door with her inside. The two men who were ultimately charged with his death argued that they were afraid of Adkins. He had the bodybuilder muscles and a bad reputation. But if he was in the room with the door closed, how could he be a danger to the two other men? Police reported that Lloyd L. England and Charles D. Adkins broke the bedroom door down, then started beating Tony Adkins in the back of his head. They also kicked him in the head. The two attackers had a weapon that they used on Adkins, leaving him with six head wounds. Adkins was rushed to the hospital and placed on life support. After medical staff determined he had no brain function, his family removed him from support. He was declared dead February the 2nd, 1999, at age 40. When their cases came to trial, England entered a guilty plea to voluntary manslaughter and Charles Adkins entered the same plea. They were originally indicted for first-degree murder. They were sentenced to 15 years in prison. This was the rare case where a victim's reputation overshadowed the proceedings. Former Fayette County Prosecutor Paul Blake told the judge he accepted the plea because he feared what defense lawyers might say about Adkins' reputation. His character in general could become an issue at trial, Blake said. At the sentencing for the two attackers, Alicia Adkins spoke on behalf of her family. She pointed out that the two men inflicted six separate skull fractures on her brother. The two men argued they acted in self-defense. But his sister asked, how can someone hurt you if they are behind a door? The reputation Adkins garnered for burning a church worked against him. Without question, Adkins started a fire at the Oakville Methodist Church. Instead of starting the fire with his eyes, he likely ignited some dried flowers in the church. In his obituary, family members wrote that Adkins was a drifter to the Viking habitat, a rebel true to his Native American heritage. What rippled out from his actions? Did those ripples figure into why two men beat him? even though he was behind a closed door. What do you think? Again, thanks for listening, and thanks to Tommy Siner for this recording. Please join me next Wednesday for a new episode of A Real Crime by Susan Williams.